Erwin Schrödinger, one of the key elements in developing quantum mechanics, in his book of My View of the World, explains the difference between organic versus inorganic. His view is taken from Schopenhauer that inorganic has an essential component, which is matter, and then an inessential component, which is the form. That's the changing or inessential part of an inorganic. However, for an organic, the essential component is the form and the changing component is the matter. He then adds that it is dependent on the observer, what is essential and what is not essential for a thing. He then goes on to explain that brain as a complex organic structure that's been evolved through evolution by natural selection manifests this world in the light of consciousness. My View of the World by Erwin Schrodinger In talks about the observation that inorganic matter, the primary focus of physics and chemistry, is rarely encountered in its pure form in our environment which is predominantly composed of living or once living organisms. This reality raises questions about the traditional view that life, organic, emerges from the non-living, inorganic, as a mere specialization, suggesting instead that this perspective might be an inversion of the actual situation. Schrodinger proposes a thought-provoking hypothesis could the prevalence of organic over inorganic matter in our environment be due to the unique and stable conditions of Earth, implying that different conditions elsewhere in the universe might give rise to alternative forms of organic existence? This argument invites a re-examination of our assumptions about the organic-inorganic relationship, hinting at the possibility of diverse forms of life shaped by their specific environmental contexts. In distinction between organic and inorganic matter, Schrodinger view is challenging simplistic definitions and focusing instead on the criterion of metabolism. Drawing on Schopenhauer's demarcation, it highlights that inorganic entities maintain their identity through consistent material, while organic beings preserve their form despite continuous material change. This perspective suggests that the distinction between organic and inorganic is less about the objects themselves and more about the observer's viewpoint. An atom's journey through a living organism is indifferent to the atom itself, emphasizing that physical interactions underpin both realms and that physics in principle can address arising questions. He then provocatively suggests reinterpreting even non-biological processes like volcanic eruptions or river flows as bearing similarities to organic processes, challenging traditional categorizations. This re-evaluation posits that the fundamental divide between organic and inorganic is not inherent to the objects, but arises from the observer's focus, either on the material or the form. This perspective eliminates the perplexity over how organic life could evolve from inorganic matter by proposing that while objects exhibit continuity, our perception shifts abruptly, influenced by our mental focus or observational framework. Schrodinger suggests that Based on human experience and comparisons with higher animals, consciousness is believed to be linked exclusively to specific nerve functions within organic, living matter. The brain is described as a sophisticated adaptive mechanism evolved through natural selection or other means to enable an organism to respond to its environment in ways that enhance its survival and that of its species. This mechanism, while not unique in its function of aiding survival, is highlighted as the most complex and dominant within organisms that possess it. However, the existence of many organisms without such a mechanism reminds us of the diversity of survival strategies in the natural world. 
This critique emphasizes the need to deepen our understanding of consciousness and its origins without settling for a simplified explanation that overlooks the complexity and rarity of the brain's evolution. Schrodinger presents the idea that the world only becomes apparent and present through the elements of consciousness, despite the brain, a crucial element for consciousness, being a highly specialized and not necessarily inevitable development in evolutionary history. He challenges the notion that the emergence of consciousness in higher mammals was a prerequisite for the world to become self-aware suggesting that without such development, the world would remain unperceived, likened to a play performed in an empty theater. With these perspectives, Schrodinger questions the sufficiency of current understandings that link consciousness so closely with brain evolution, labeling such a conclusion as the bankruptcy of our picture of the world. He then calls for an acknowledgement of this intellectual impasse and criticizes the dismissive attitude towards those seeking alternative explanations for consciousness, urging a more open-minded exploration of this profound mystery. <laughs>